soon as you're born, they make you feel small. You are pretty small, aren't you? By giving you no time instead of it all. Well, babies are pretty boring. Till it's so fucking crazy you can't follow the rules. That's the wrong line. They hate you at home. They hate you at school. Until it's all fucking crazy you can't follow the rules. Twenty odd years they've taught you to steal. Then they expect you to pick a career. But you can't really function cause you're so full of fear. That's true. There's room at the top, they're telling you still. But first you must learn how to smile as you kill. If you want to be like the folks on the hill. If you're successful in this world, it don't mean not. It doesn't mean shit. I've had a rough day. And I couldn't sleep. So I got a beer. I feel pretty sleepy after a beer. I don't need to drink. And drinking beer makes me want to smoke more tobacco. If I had any cannabis, I wouldn't be drinking beer. Yeah, I've had a pretty rough day. And I just wanted to talk to myself. <laughs> Hello, Stephen. How are you? Oh, I've been better. But I'm not bad, really. Um, if I upload this video, <clears throat> there are a couple of things I did want to make a video about, a couple of subjects. Uh, you know, I, the last few videos I've made have been pretty contentious, unpopular, provocative. But it's been me exploring um, some facts which may be true. And um, I still believe them. It seems to me most people don't see logic because they don't want to. You're in denial. Especially when you know, if I've had a discussion with someone and all they can say is you're an idiot or you're fucking wrong you know, that's hardly good grounds for a discussion, is it? I mean, <laughs> what do you come back with when someone just says you're an idiot? What, well, you know, how can you continue that discussion? So that you know, this pretty pointless task continuing with that. Now, I did want to talk about um, angels. In a previous video I made, I said angels among us. I would now change that to spirits among us. People, basically, people who have finished the stage on this earth 
of earthly existence. Apparently, there are about 21 billion people in the spirit world. So if you add all the people on the earth, that's 28 billion. Don't worry where I get these numbers from. <laughs> I, can't, I can't bother to go into it. And it may not be right, but it might be right. Let's just say it is for, for a moment. Seven billion of those currently in the spirit world have had a life. Had a life on earth. Fourteen billion of them, billion of them have never had a life on earth. That's quite mad to think about. But anyway, it's not what I was going to talk about. Angels then, right. So, in the Quran, it talks about this. And it says, um, God created the angels out of fire. And he created the men out of clay. And they said to the angels, you must bow, in a sense, serve the ones made out of clay. And then, apparently, this is where Satan comes from. Like, Satan was an angel. I said, no, I'm not bowing to them. Da -da 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 -da. Whether that's true or not, you know, there may be some sort of metaphorical uh, truth in that. But if we look at the Bible, and we've got Adam and Eve, which is one of the videos I've done recently, A Man and a Mon, First Two Humans, which... Most people cannot grasp, because they say, no, come on, evolution, yeah? We came from apes. We are apes. We're the ape family, in a sense, our bodies are most like apes. And then I've argued, well, come on, you know, like, did a, apparently we've all come from rodents. And, you know, how has a rodent become an elephant? And if rodents became elephants, why are there any rodents left? I'm not going to go into that argument too much. But that's the one with the also connected to animals don't have souls, which a lot of people find offensive, but it's not offensive at all. And you know, I remember sort of seeing someone on on telly, you know, it was years ago, you know, and stating, how can you compare animals with humans? You know, look at what we've done, da, 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 look at what the complexity of our lives, and animals live on instincts, and da 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 da. And at the time, I thought, git, twat. Animals just as special as we are, da 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 da. But, you know, when I first heard that, you know, we've, there's a physical body, a spirit body, and that we were alike with animals but then there's the soul thing and God created man in the in his own image and God is a soul so we have souls and animals don't and that's what I came to uh, but before I go off too much um, back to the angels so in the Bible you've got these first two humans made perfectly and then it states quite clearly in the Bible how long they lived. And, you know, when they were born and the next generations and how long each generation lived. And, you know, they were all living about 900 years. And then it was after Noah that states in the Bible, now man shall only, shall only live 120 years. And so people would just say, you know, and I, I say as well, that every word of the Bible is not truth, because there's been translations, and there's probably been added bits, and there's probably been bits that have been taken out. But these bits that have survived, you know, are we to assume that some bloke just made it all up, and 
<clears throat> happen to be able to write it down or pass it on verbally and everyone just took on this made up stuff I don't see that as logical at all and I think you know people really think about it you know there is logic you can you can discern things if you have if you give it some thought so and I think in those beginning stages in some of the books of the Bible are very old you know and and I'd say it's logical that some of this truth remained and in the beginning days if you don't if you believe in the evolution of theory <clears throat> you know we could argue about this all night but the true missing link hasn't been found I looked at some skull fossils that they have on Wikipedia and you look at the earliest ones they Apparently 1.5 million years ago, here's this skull. Well, am I just going to take that as truth? I mean, someone's just put this skull on here and apparently carbon dated it. When you look at them, there's like one or two that look like human. But most of them look like monkeys or gorillas or chimpanzees. They don't look human. Then they start looking a bit human. But you still can't always trust the dating. I mean, that gets to about 40,000 years ago. They start looking a bit more human, but the first really human one is only about 7,000 years old. But anyway, that aside, um, <clears throat> if we then just take what's written in the Bible and assume that some bloke didn't just make it up, or woman. The fact that it's lasted and it's been held on to in these books. So let's presume that, you know, God did create the first two people. They would have had all the truths. And then their sons and daughters, you know, obviously would have had the truths passed on. And the truth would have been quite well known. So you get to the point of Noah when apparently the world was flooded and you know and then you use logic and say well hang on this bit can't be true because quite soon after Noah his three sons well, were it hasn't mentioned any daughters, it might have been daughters but then suddenly they talk about you know don't go over to that land because there are other people there so, so what I would consider perhaps angels are these first few thousand beings, or however many there were, say there were 20,000, that had 900 year lifespans. Now, I would suggest that they would appear different physically. And I actually think the other night I saw one in a dream. And a couple of nights before that, I had a dream that me and somebody else were picking up this lady, who I think is my soulmate. And then a couple of nights later, I saw her, and I just took the opportunity to give her a snog. <laughs> it's a proper dream. I wasn't making it up. I wasn't just sitting there imagining it. I gave a good long snog, not open mouth or anything, just a passionate kiss. And um, and then I saw on the sofa, on a sofa, a man lying like like this, side on the sofa, sort of looking at me. And his physical form was was strikingly different to any other person I've ever seen in dream or real life. Um, it was huge, huge guy, huge guy. And just like double the width of me, but everything like, but perfectly muscular triangle, but just everything was twice as thick. 
It was probably big as well, big and tall too, but just like almost like uh, like how they would draw a cartoon character of Thor or something or Zeus. And I, I was going to draw it, but I just wouldn't wouldn't be able to. And he sort of had this, I don't know, there was some information that passed with this sort of look. You pick up, you pick up sort of kind of vague information, not really stuff you can put into words, but I mean, it's like, you know, he's like nicking my girlfriend. That's, that's what it was like. And it occurred to me that uh, he must be an angel. Well, what we what I'm now deciphering the difference those ones that live 900 years they like call them angels, it's probably the wrong word because you might be able to become an angel when you get close to God, I don't know so yeah I think I saw one of them and he's obviously not a really good one because he wouldn't be nicking my girlfriend if he was why was he nick my girlfriend? Huh? So I probably just said something that most people consider to be completely bonkers. Well, I don't mind what you think. We all need to make sense of our own realities. So that was that really. So, I don't know, you know, what chance I have against sort of combating anything like that. I wouldn't, wouldn't attempt it. I wouldn't attempt to combat it. Like they say, love your, love your neighbour, love your enemy. You just have... You know, when you try and love someone, you, you have to understand why they do what they do. Hmm. Today I went to see my son's head teacher at school. I had to wait an hour to see him. <laughs> it didn't pass passed quite quickly. He was very busy, but I I went to see him, so I, I had nothing better to do, so I waited. Have you ever had this thing where you look at the carpet and you see faces? Well. I've had that all my life. And only recently I'm beginning to actually take these faces more seriously and see them actually as as spirits. It was a spirit I was looking at. And if you look long enough and you're open to kind of receiving, um, if you like, the information from the sort of face you're seeing, You know, you can actually start feeling like you're um, you're communicating. By the way, anyone with um, no hair or short hair, I don't think you're going to be very spiritualistic. Traditionally, women have had longer hair than men. And um, what do they say about women's intuition? I've noticed with my hair, as you can see it's long, it's been growing for nearly three years. And I used to cut it once a year, I used to shave it off once a year in the spring. And I did always feel when I shaved it off, I felt like I'd forgotten stuff. I felt like I was starting from scratch again. And now that I've grown it for three years, I'm starting to believe that it's uh, useful. It's like antenna. It's like the antenna to the to the spiritual realm. 
on your spiritual side. So I'm not cutting it. Anyway, where was I going? So I was looking at this spirit. I spent about 10 minutes doing this. And he was like laughing at me, like, because I've had a crap day. You know. Things haven't exactly gone to plan. It's been a bit stuff with my son and my ex-wife. And, um... It was like laughing at me. You know, that, that could have got me angry. Well, something else good happened today, actually. I got someone to agree to give me <clears throat> an intensive hang gliding course. I'm going to get a hang glider as well. <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> so this spirit laughing at me and and I, you know, I thought, well, I've got, I got to love this spirit because you've got to love everyone. Um, and I just started to think, well, you know, you're, uh, you know, why, why are you being, why do you want, why are you enjoying my misfortune sort of thing? And it, the face started to change. And I was being loving to him. And I was saying, thinking, well, you know, you've got to, because when you speak in your head, that's your spirit body talking, just as you would in a dream. Saying, so, so why are you, you know, why do you like this? And, you know, it's not doing you any good being, being unloving isn't benefiting you and you would be benefited you would benefit yourself if you were more loving and and I noticed a bit of fear in, in this <laughs> carpet spirit <laughs> spirit which was I was seeing in the carpet and now lots of you think I'm crazy right but um, the face like changed I could see you know and I was like well you know feel the fear, I've felt fear, I've I've been open to feeling fear and, and it passes and it'll be better for it. And you get a nice feeling, I was just getting one then. A nice feeling of goodness. So yeah. It's good stuff. You think I'm bonkers? Probably. And the next thing I was going to talk about... I'll skip one and go into another one. Now... We're supposedly be, be able to survive on water. And... Hot drinks and hot food apparently is like a comfort thing, but fuck it, we, we live in a cold country in the winter anyway. It's cold. I'm sure it wasn't really God's design for us to live in cold climates as such. Um, well, not ideal anyway. So we need fucking hot food, don't we? We need some hot drinks. But yeah, I've kind of been into this before, how... Uh, People were sent to northern climates with the blue eyes. But anyway, I'm not going to go into that. So that was a short one. So my biggest problem today has been dentists. And dentists that want to do things to my son's teeth. And my ex-wife, she's a bit of a sucker for authority. You know, she will just go with what the authority says and I think they like that and I think she likes that they like it <laughs> so she does tend to like using doctors and dentists you know if at all possible and probably the more things they suggest they can do the more she likes it but I'm completely the opposite 
I'm completely like, you know, if it isn't absolutely necessary, then, then let's not do it. There's been this whole thing with my son's tooth, he had a toothache back in May, and it, it was a problem then, I agree, but, you know, he cut back on his sweets after the toothache, you know, realised it was sweets that were probably causing it, probably sweets I've been giving him. So, I, you know, I said to him, well, you know, cut down your sweets and uh, they won't have to pull the tooth out. You know, six months has gone by and his tooth's got better. There's no pain, but the dentist is still saying, we've got to pull the tooth out. And they haven't been very good when I've gone down to see them. They haven't been very good at explaining to me why it needs to be pulled out. I saw when it was, it had this greyness to it in the middle. But now it's not grey anymore. And they're saying it's a dead tooth, so how can it be a dead tooth, right? Dead tooths don't come back to life. If it was a dead tooth, it would have stayed grey. It wouldn't have come back to white. And it got me thinking, you know, about dentists. And, you know, who wants to be a dentist? <laughs> who grows up, oh, I want to be a dentist. I want to shove my things into people's mouths. Not really, do they? And this whole thing about dentistry in seven years at university. A bit fishy, I think. And they're failed doctors, aren't they? Let's face it. They wanted to be a doctor. But they didn't make the grade. So they probably, last few years in college, moved over to dentistry. <clears throat> And and this particular dentistry is an orthodontist, so it's NHS. And I'm thinking they just they just want to project their protect their budgets. And I, I've I've worked you know I worked for myself last twelve years, but the job I was in before. We we were in a team of field engineers. We had a boss, and you know, come towards the end of their budget year, and it'd be like, oh, we haven't. We haven't spent all our budget. If we don't spend all our budget, we won't get the same budget next year. So we got to spend it. We got to just spend. We just got to do stuff to spend our budget, so that we get the same budget next year. You know, and that sort of thinking isn't isn't good, is it? It's not progressive. And I'm thinking, you know, these NHS orthodontists or whatever, you know, they. They probably want to increase their budgets. You know, they're just protecting their jobs, basically, aren't they? And they want to do teeth sealants and stuff like this. I never had any teeth sealants when I was younger, but now apparently they just do it with everyone. Coat your molars so that you you know you don't get cavities. Well, we don't have to do that. And there's so much about the teeth that is still understood. You'd think with all these dentists doing, people aspiring to be dentists growing up and doing seven years at university because they want to be a dentist, um, would have found out everything about there is to know about teeth. Well, they don't. I mean, I was looking it up today and the enamel, the enamel is a quite a big unknown. Did you know the enamel is clear? It hasn't got a colour. It's the, uh, what do they call it, dentil or something under the enamel, which is, gives its colour. Um, and the enamel is made up of two proteins, and they're, they're highly misunderstood. So by coating them in a, whatever they use, you know, they don't know what harm they're going to be doing, potentially. And... You know, we coat quite fine before. And and there's loads of things. I mean, f ugh, big hater of fluoride. I'm not going to go into that because that, that's, that's another subject. But um, there's loads of stuff about fluoride that's not good. So, yeah, there's this 
there's there's quite a lot of unknowns and this is a very interesting thing the um the the, the teeth are sort of all made while you're still in the womb we're well, not completely made but they're some essential part of the development all happens while it, in your first i think the the, your your first teeth, your baby teeth, the, the development for them is like really early on, and then for all your other teeth, the, this essential development that if it doesn't happen, your teeth will be fucked up, um, is is done like within sort of you know fourteen weeks or something, why, right? It's quite interesting stuff. You can see why maybe the dentist would have to go to university for seven years. Yeah, so maybe actually <laughs> knowing these facts could inspire some people to actually want to be dentists. But I'm not sure the existing dentists did actually really want to be dentists. I, when I was a child, we had a good dentist. I, I liked him, he was good. And it, in my adult life, I've had one very good dentist. I only had him once. I was at a dentistry where they kept changing. There was this one guy who was brilliant. And he was saying... He's saying it doesn't matter what toothpaste you use, in fact, even it wouldn't even matter if you didn't use toothpaste. He said it's all about, you know, just brushing and clean, in fact, new toothbrush, don't bother with an electric toothbrush. Da -da -da -da. And that's the information I'm seeing now as well. But it, I, I haven't um, brushed my teeth for about three years. And I think I've said this before. I use a licorice stick which, which I chew a bit and it makes it fluffy and I just rub off the crap sometimes with that. And um, I also drink rainwater which helped. And I don't wake up in the morning with a shit taste in my mouth. I was over at my friend's house a couple of nights ago and they both said how every morning they wake up with a really fucking shit taste in their mouth. So that got me thinking that um, using toothpaste probably kills the good natural bacteria in your mouth. And so when you brush your teeth at night and you go to bed, you wake up in the morning, you've had no beneficial bacteria, you've only had some remains of some shit bacteria which has grown through the night and you wake up in the morning with a shitty taste in your mouth. I don't get that anymore, so I'm glad of that. But, you know, I tried telling that to my ex-wife. It's not very easy. Um, do you want to look at my teeth? Do I have to show you? It's probably too dark. <laughs> on the on the insides there are stains. They're bad. But they don't... It doesn't give me any grief. I went to this one dent when I was last at dent, it must be for like four, three years ago or something. Because I got this fake bit of tooth here, and that bit's fake. And that always goes darker because it absorbs toxins. So I did used to go and kind of try and get that sorted out. And this one dentist, this bloke, he took that little sticky prod thing, right? And he was going around my mouth and he was like, really pressing it really hard into my teeth. What the fuck's he trying to do? And afterwards he goes, oh, you've got good strong teeth. I said, it's a good job, isn't it? After what you've just done with that spike. I mean, if there had been any slight weaknesses, oh, oh, it's not worth thinking about. So... That's that. Teeth. Interesting. You know, they don't need to be shiny, bright white to work, do they? I like things to be of practical use. And I think, you know, if you're able to eat any food you want without pain and you don't have shitty taste in your mouth and you haven't got big abscesses and your gums are pretty healthy, well, nothing to worry about and 
I have not used toothpaste for over three years. So I haven't had any of that crappy fluoride in me. Another thing which stops you being spiritually connected when it bonds with aluminium goes through the blood brain barrier and calcifies your pineal gland, apparently. So I don't know if I'm going to upload this or not, I probably will. I'm a sucker for punishment. But yeah, that's about it. So, shall I sing a song? Shall I sing a song? I think my guitar's out of tune. Here's a song I can't sing. be the day that they're gonna throw it back to you by now you should have somehow realized what you're not to do I don't believe that anybody feels the way I do about you now back beat the word is on the street that the fire in your heart is out I'm sure you heard it all before, but you never really had a doubt. I don't believe that anybody feels the way I do about you now. And all the roads you seem to take a winding, I'm sure I'm with the right courses. and all the lights that lead the way you're blinding. There are many things that I would like to say to you, but I don't know how. No, Cause maybe you're gonna be the one that saves me. How many special people change? How many lives are living strange? Where were you while we were getting high? Slowly walking down the hall Faster than a cannonball Where were you while we were getting high? Someday you will find me In a champagne supernova in the sky Someday you will find me Caught beneath the landslide I think that's not In a champagne supernova A champagne supernova in the sky Dawn and ask her why a dream of dreams but never dies. Wipe that tear away now from your eyes. Slowly walking down the hall, faster than a cannonball. Where were you while we were getting high? Someday you will find me, caught beneath the landslide. Sky. Someday you will find me 
song. Please be up all night 